A little over 23 years ago, Sony launched the PlayStation Empire with this console. Now, it's taking that same device, making it smaller, cramming 20 games into it, and selling it back to us as the PlayStation Classic. We're seeing it for the first time today. Let's go check it out. The console itself is a really nice miniaturization of the original hardware, from the buttons that feel not exactly like the originals, but pretty close, to again, the really, really nice controller port look, and even a lot of details on the back. The power port's in roughly the same position as on the original console, as well as the HDMI port was the other thing, but it's even got the auxiliary port that you used to be able to plug accessories like the Game Genie into. Unfortunately, although it really looks like a very real latch, this does not come off, so please don't try to open it. You'll probably just break what is otherwise a very nice sculpt. The PlayStation Classic boots up with the classic PlayStation startup Sony logo that you remember from the 90s and straight into this really simple, basic menu. It's bare bones, it doesn't have any background music at all, it's just exactly what you see. The simple square artwork for each of the 20 games, a small settings menu down below, and a spot for the memory card and the save state. Games boot up and finish the sequence with the PlayStation logo. So you don't quite get the whole effect you did in the original PlayStation where you get the Sony logo and then the PlayStation logo together, but this is actually really similar to what you would get if you booted up one of these games on the PlayStation 3, starting straight with the PlayStation logo and then going into the game itself. One thing I like that differentiates Sony's PlayStation Classic from Nintendo's efforts is that its controller is USB. That means there's no proprietary connector. It plugs into a standard port that you're already familiar with and you already know how it works. There's no word yet if plugging this USB port into a computer will let you use this on PC games or any other device that uses USB controllers like PlayStation's other consoles, but it's nice to see a standard connector. And my favorite part about it is that the connector has this thick Sony PlayStation 1 style port on the bottom that looks just like the connector from the original PlayStation controllers. Effectively, it doesn't do anything, but when you have it plugged into the console, it makes it look way more like the original controllers are plugged in there. Unlike Nintendo's console, which are using these weird, sort of bulbous Wii controller extension ports. The controller itself feels really good. It has that same classic PlayStation D-pad, which is a really nice separated directional input and the basic face buttons. Uh, the same controller shoulder buttons are here, smaller, but one thing that you'll notice is that it is the basic Sony PlayStation controller. That means if you grew up using one of the dual analog variants or the more iconic DualShock controller, this is going to be just the simplest control scheme. And that's a little bit of a shame because a lot of PlayStation games, including some of the ones I think that are on the PlayStation Classic, they don't require dual analog control, but they actually do benefit from them in some way. So if you were hoping to play Metal Gear Solid with the more precise dual analog controls, you're just out of luck. Once you actually boot up a game, it's a pretty basic no frills experience. Here I am playing Abe's Odyssey, and it's not at all different than the original game. Down to the point that that means there's no extra frills. You can't change any filters, there's no special turbo modes. It's exactly as you might have experienced it on the original PlayStation, except for with a slightly more clear HDMI output. In fact, the only real change in the experience comes when you want to change games. You still have to lean forward and press the reset button. But when you do, it brings you to a main menu that automatically creates a resume point. Every time you press reset, the game will automatically create a save state of where you were. If you go back into the game, it picks you up right where you left off. And if you exit out one more time, the system will ask you if you want to replace your existing resume point with a new one. And that's about it as far as special save features go. Every game does have a standard virtual memory card that'll hold the same 15 spots as the original though. So you don't have to worry about managing multiple games across a single memory card. Every game has its own dedicated one. Apart from that, there's really not much of the PlayStation Classic beyond that basic experience. There is a settings menu, but all it has is health and safety information, screensaver settings, your basic language that you set up at first boot, and if you want to reformat the console back to its default settings. Similarly, the guides mode only just has a link to the product website and a simple console guide that tells you how to quit the game, turn off the console, or change virtual discs during gameplay. If you're playing a game like Final Fantasy VII that required multiple discs, there's going to be a point in the game where it'll ask you to change discs. That seems to be the only point in which the eject button is used on the PlayStation console. Sadly, it doesn't actually open the lid, but it will give you the chance to actually change virtual discs and move to the next point in the game. 
A lot of the games in the PlayStation Classic are definitely products of their time, though. Old 3D graphics with jagged edges and lines, low textures, and really funny-looking polygons. It's just sort of what happens when you play 3D games from the 90s era. Some games really do show their age, but others, like 2D games like Rayman and Mr. Driller, have really clean-looking 2D graphics. And they're smooth, and because of their style, that they weren't pushing the edge of 3D from the time, they just don't show their age as much. So how old a game is going to look on the PlayStation Classic really depends on what style it's in. Like any classic console though, the biggest thing where it wins and loses on is the library of games. And like the Nintendo and the Super Nintendo, there were a lot of great titles on the original PlayStation. And nailing it down to just 20, that's a hard task. There are great games on here that are huge classics, like Metal Gear Solid, and I love the original Oddworld and Resident Evil. But it also kind of makes you wonder about what's missing. For instance, Twisted Metal is on here, but I would argue that Twisted Metal 2 was definitely the superior game. And Resident Evil, the original, is one of my favorites, but again, Resident Evil 2 is a little bit better. Another problem is that while some of the games on here are super iconic, they're maybe not the best experience now. Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six may have spawned a huge franchise of games, but the original game on PlayStation just has some really tough controls to wrap your head around from a modern perspective. There's also countless games on here that fans will be hoping for that just aren't around. Iconic games like Tomb Raider and Parappa the Rapper aren't present. Even Sony's 1990s-ish mascot isn't here, Crash Bandicoot. Despite it being playable in the lobby of the Sony PlayStation building we saw this demo in. If you've been trying to decide if the PlayStation Classic is for you, we can tell you after this first look that what you see is pretty much what you get. You get a small console that looks remarkably like the original, but it just doesn't have that many extras. Just the 20 games we already know it comes with, a single controller, and no extra special features. But if you want a simple, basic experience, you'll be able to get it on December 3rd for $99.99.